All right, here we go. The Empire State Strikes Back. That's right. What do we know about communists? What do we know about socialists? What do we know about bullies? You're like, how are those three the same? They are the same because liberals and communists and leftists are bullies. And I've been saying this literally, not figuratively. I've been saying it literally for years because, uh, well, great example. The left doesn't want you to smoke. So instead of the instead of saying, here's some educational programs about why smoking is bad for you, instead they raise the tax and they raise the age and they punish you. See, because they don't have time to convince you that their side is right. They just have to club you over the head with it. Kind of like gun control. The American people as a whole don't want gun control. How do you know that, Paul? You don't know that. Well, based on the sales figures over the last three years, since more guns have been sold in the United States over the last three years than in the history of the country. Yeah, but they pulled these news media's audiences and it says that 54% Mm -hmm. of people. 54% of the purple haired lesbians in the Bronx are in favor of gun control. Uh, Okay. 54% of the welfare recipients who use the BART train as a toilet in San Francisco think gun control is a good idea. Oh, well. Heck. And also, it's important to note that it doesn't matter if a majority think that it's a good idea. That is true. That Thank you for bringing that up. Purpose of being a representative republic and not a democracy. That's right. You know the the alt Jared, I want this. This occurred to me the other night as an epiphany, and epiphany is not spelled like epiphone, which is a totally different word. Just for the record, uh, you want to know the perfect classic example of democracy and why it's crap. Do you want to know? Yeah. The 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 murder of Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. What did Pilate say? Yeah. I find no I find no guilt in this man. I'll scourge him and release him. Mm-hmm. And what happened? The Jews stirred up the crowd. I could get the I could get it and give it to you. The Jews stirred up the crowd and they screamed, crucify him. So even though the leader at the time knew it was wrong, what you had was you had some zealots, you had some activists who stirred up the masses. So it seemed like the majority was in favor. Even though it was completely wrong and it was unjust, it happened anyway because that's democracy. That is the perfect example of why democracy is no good. <gasps> Mind blown? You're welcome. All right, so the uh, the most popular president in the history of the United States, the president who got more votes than any other president. Remember, that's what we're told. That is what the, uh, the propaganda, the Washington propaganda organ uh, has told us that this man who's about to speak is the most popular, had received the most votes. Yeah, we all know that's a lie, but, you know, about the media, they just keep telling the lie over and over and over again until the uh, the ignorant masses start repeating it. So uh, President Imbecile went out to uh, basically say that the Supreme Court is out of control. Yeah, the Supreme Court took literally months to come up with a decision. They read the Constitution, and having read the Constitution, came out and said, you know what? Nowhere in that document does it give the federal government the authority to oversee infanticide. Nowhere. It's not there. Uh, The... You can read the fine print. Yeah, killing your baby is not a right guaranteed to you under the Constitution. And so they went back to the Tenth Amendment, and they said, well, it says right here in Amendment 10, 
anything that's not specifically written right here goes back to the states and the people respectively well biden that didn't sit well with the leftists because we know that the leftists believe that the federal government is there to tell us what we can and can't do with our lives every moment of our lives so when president meat puppet uh went to the podium in the fake what in the fake oval office when he went to the set that they built for him and i still want to know jared zach why the media is okay with that well because covid how how in the yeah, covid no, covid because covid yeah they had to build him a set because covid how, how does that matter you didn't know that i i don't know how that matters it's covid because covid yeah because you can't be in the actual room you have to be in a room that looks like a room because covid yeah okay so president me puppet that, went COVID. to the the podium and this is what he said in case you haven't heard it, because we tried to share it on socialist media, and they, uh, they, you, you know what they do when they, when fascist book doesn't like you sharing stuff, they do the statistics not available, cannot be whatever, and they throttle it. So it's technically there, so they they can say, oh, it's there. You have one hundred and seven thousand followers, and fourteen people saw it. It's not our fault that that your hundred thousand people aren't paying attention to your page really how do you have a hundred thousand followers and 48 people see something 102 people see something that's because they're throttling it because they're hiding it because they don't want you to see it but see what they don't know is i have a microphone and they don't and so i will say so you will listen to every damn word yeah, I have to say. So you will listen to every damn word I have to say. So here we go. This is President Meat Puppet from this weekend talking about the Supreme Court. It is noteworthy that the percentage of women who register to vote and cast a ballot is consistently higher than the percentage of the men who do so. End of quote. Repeat the line. Women are not without electric. Do you guys realize what the, it play that one more time for those people who weren't quite paying attention? Pay attention. Power. It is noteworthy that the percentage of women who register to vote and cast a ballot is consistently higher than the percentage of the men who do so. End of quote. Repeat the line. Women are Stop. not. The idiot just read the stage cues on the teleprompter. You see, when they when they type this stuff for the idiot to read on the teleprompter, they type it as if they're typing it for uh, a cogent human being with all their faculties. But that's not what they have there. We have an just one week ago. They they we saw a photo of him. He flipped the card over. He shouldn't. He wasn't supposed to do it. He was fiddling and and it says you enter room you take a seat you welcome the press what they have to give him a card to tell him what to do when he walks into the room so that he doesn't just wander off he's on a teleprompter they're like well we don't want to let joe free flow we can't let him free form you know that's not going to happen because, uh, you know, we understand what the consequences are of letting Joe just speak his mind, corn pop. Uh, oh. Come on, man. You know the thing. The kids would, rub, during the, would the come and rub and, on my hairy legs. Yeah, they liked it. My hair wouldn't, and they, they'd, they'd rub it down, and then corn pop was a bad dude, and I said, hey, man. <laughs> what are you talking about? This is a campaign speech. I like little kids sitting on my lap. Joe, don't say that in a campaign speech. What? Didn't sound bad until it came out. Yeah, it sounded good in, in his head. head. It sounded great. So uh, I said it, and it was like, oh, man. That is the, uh, the meat puppet that this is what happens when you let criminals steal elections, and then you allow yourself to be shamed into silence about it. Well, I don't want to bring up the election. Because January 6th was, a, was an insurrection. 
If January 6th was an insurrection, it was the crappiest insurrection in the history of mankind. How many people died on January 6th? You mean really or media lies? Really? Uh, two. And who were they? Oh, it was two women. One woman was beaten to death and she died later in the hospital. And another woman was shot through the throat by uh, one of the D.C. Stasi. Mm hmm. Yeah. How many guns were possessed by the crowd of insurrectionists who went to the Capitol that day? That would be zero. That would be zero. All right. You guys want to talk about Duracoat? I want to talk about Duracoat. Let's talk about Duracoat. Please. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Why? This is the, the question that people have asked me. They're like, okay, I get it, Paul. I get it. You've mentioned it. You've talked about it. You don't need to talk about it anymore. You're like, you said to me, I, I don't have an old gun. I don't have my great uncle Jim or my grandpappy's gun or my dad's gun that needs a new finish. I don't have any of that. I have a brand new gun that I just got out of the box. So it doesn't need a Duracoat finish because I don't want it to be green or blue or orange or red or anything like that. It's just, it's black and it's fine and that's it. And I say to you, awesome, cool, fantastic. But I also say to you, here's some reality. The gun you bought was based on a certain price. The price was based on what the manufacturer knows they can move those guns for. They do market research. They know what their competition is doing, and they factor in everything from the stock to the trigger to whether the receiver is going to be aluminum or steel. Everything that goes into that gun is based on how much they're going to sell it for. To include the finish. To include the finish. Now, when they're putting up, when they're mass producing shotguns, rifles, handguns, whatever, they have to think about, all right, how much should we spend finishing? You're like, what do you mean? It doesn't cost them anything to put a finish on a gun. And there, it's already there in the factory. <laughs> no, ladies and gentlemen, every single step in the manufacturing process costs money. Some steps cost more money than others. So if you're mass producing shotguns, rifles, whatever, and that gun is in the price point margin, or what, what do I want to say? It's in the price point category. Because most normies, when they go to Academy Outdoors to buy a shotgun, to buy a bolt action rifle, whatever, they're price shopping. Most normies today don't walk into the Academy Outdoors or the wherever and say, I'm, or well, let me, what's my new favorite? The, the Murdochs. They don't walk oh, yeah. into Murdochs and say, I am going to buy the Remington 12345 today. Now, actually, most of them think, I'd like to have a new rifle for deer season, or I'd like to have a new shotgun. And they go in, and they're like, what do you have in 12-gauge shotguns? And they're like, well, I have this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. This one's from here. This one's from XYZ, blah, 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 blah. And so, you know, what does the normie consumer do? They price shop. They look at features, and they're like, mm, okay. So if the knowing this, the manufacturer is not going to invest 50 to to $100 in the finishing process because that has to go into the price tag of the gun instead what they're going to do is they're going to invest probably like 25 or 20 or maybe 10 dollars in the metal finishing process to keep the price point low to compete with their competitors right the the finish on most price point now, if you're buying a custom rifle, you're like, no, dude, I bought a custom blah, blah, blah. I spent 1800 bucks for it. Okay. If you bought a custom whatever and you spent 1800 bucks on it, that's not a price point finish, right? You know, I went to Weatherby and I bought the Weatherby Super Ultra Magnum Better Wada and I gave him 1899 for it. That's going to have a good finish on it. I went and bought a shotgun or a rifle that was $489. 
that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to have, it's going to have a finish, but it's the least expensive one that they can get away with putting on there. I just experienced uh, that situation with an out-of-the-box gun. Uh, got it out of the box, was testing, you know, basically I took it apart, I cleaned it. I didn't really have to clean, clean it, but I, I put lube on the, the rails and, I, you know, all the mechanisms and so on and so forth. We took it out the range, you know, and I noticed that there was a, a scratch, not a deep scratch, but just a, a, a line that was about an inch and a half, maybe two inches on the barrel. And you can see it, and I, I took my finger and I rubbed it to see if it would just rub off, and it didn't rub off. Now, it wasn't such a deep scratch that it was down to the metal, but it was a scratch in the finish. Was I super angry about it? No, I'm not super angry about it, but it it's reality. The gun has a price point finish on it. That's reality. So if you've got one of these guns and you're like, well, I like, I really like this gun a lot and I, I plan on keeping it, what you can do is just pop your little butt over to Duracoat Firearm Finishes. And like I said, you don't have to make it red, orange, blue, camouflage, you know, tiger striped, anything. You just put a solid color on it. And one of the things, what occurred to me, Jared, when I saw that little scratch on the barrel was what did Steve Lauer come up with right be before he left us? Uh, the badass. The badass. Bad he came up with the badass coating. And the badass is a rock solid, hardcore firearm finish. And it is way more solid and hardcore than anything you're going to get from a price point factory gun. If you have one of these rifles, one of these shotguns, you know, or a handgun or whatever. Uh, that has a price. Let's you know, let's face it. It's a factory bluing or parkerizing or whatever. Uh, they did that because they had to put a finish on the gun. They're not going to spend a lot of money because they know they're competing with other people, uh, and they can't. That's just the reality of business. The badass finish. If you go to Duracoat's website, you can find it right there. Uh, you can get it if you're a pro and you have all the airbrushes and hoses and everything. Then you're good to go. Uh, if you're not a pro and you just want to do it in your garage or your workshop or, or whatever, you can get the Canon can technology uh, and slap it on there. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is why, and I've had people say, oh, I've got a brand new gun. I don't need a Duracoat finish. It's it's fine. It just came out. I just got it out of the box. Like, okay, cool. Awesome. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Moving on. Moving on down the highway. Moving on down the highway. Moving down, something, something, pass me by. All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, I'm trying to uh, pull up the SOTG giveaway page. SOTG give away. Dot com. All right. I go there, and it's going to pop up, and it's going to say. The contest is over. Contest cool. contest is over. Cool. Cool. All right. Uh, I point fire on finishes. You want to check those guys out. They're good. They're buddies. They're our friends. Actually, the finish on high points are pretty solid, believe it or not. I don't believe it. Well, it's true. Uh, something that I wanted to uh, mention to you guys and remind you, we talked about it a little bit earlier uh, during the pre-show, is Juxi.com, J-U-X-X-I. Juxi is a new platform, and it is it, it's basically it's going to be your answer to 1A and 2A. And why is that? And you're like, uh, it's just another platform. It's just another video thing. I've seen these things come and go. Here's the thing. 99% of all the other alternative media sources that you, you know, media outlet, platform, whatever, we're still reliant on Google or YouTube. And YouTube and Google are intermingled. They're tied together. They were still reliant on a third party to host and support their videos and their video traffic. Well, what good does it do you to put your videos on a third party platform that's reliant on YouTube and Google? If Google decides, hey, your your company or your your topic, we don't like your topic, we don't like your company, you're making ghost guns or whatever. So we're gonna shut you down. Juxi's not gonna do that because they're they're a standalone, they're an independent platform. They do not rely on Google or YouTube. They rely on themselves, which is probably a pretty good thing. So what I'm gonna ask you guys right now, I'm gonna ask you guys very kindly and nicely. I know what the numbers are. 
I know what the current subscriber numbers to Student of the Guns Juxy channel are. And I'm going to look at that, and then I'm going to ask you, and if you you got five seconds to get to the dance floor. If you're not there, I'm gonna want, I don't want to see you no more. All right, so Student of the Gun on Juxy. Go there, subscribe to it, so that if these uh, California socialist scumbags pull any crap and uh, decide that they're just going to arbitrarily remove our videos or they're going to shadow ban them or whatever, well, you'll still be able to see the material. So there you go. Plus, they're good people who care about you and your First Amendment and Second Amendment rights, so you, you should probably support them. Just saying. An easy way to get there is go to studentofthegun.com slash juxy. Studentofthegun.com slash juxy. And the latest video, the top video on the studentofthegun.com slash juxy site is SOE micro subgun chest rig review by yours truly. Yes, indeed, by yours truly. All right, moving on, moving on. It is time for new listeners to close the hole under their nose and open up both of their ears and listen louder. Attention, new listeners. We produced a complimentary online training course called Seven Training Tips That Could Save Your Life. Get instant access by joining the Student Lounge for free at studentofthegun.com. Do you watch Student of the Gun TV, read the blog, and follow us on Facebook? If you answered no to any of these questions, you are wrong, but you can easily fix yourself. Go to studentofthegun.com to find everything SOTG. Yes. That's it. That's what you should do. That's what you do. That's what I said to do. And so do that. All right, moving on. It is time for Brownells Bullet Points brought to you by our good buddies at Brownells.com. So a continuing theme of Brownells Bullet Points is get the stuff that you need to have they have an emergency and survival, or is it emergency and survival gear? Yes, yeah, emergency and survival gear tab, and they've got all kinds of stuff. Do you have your your crap, your caca together and prepared and all in one sock? I don't know. All in one sock. Yeah. So we had I, I discovered this clip this weekend or last week or whatever. Uh, Governor Christy Nome. This was going into the Fourth of July holiday. Uh, Governor Christine Noem was a guest on Fox and Friends, and uh, they asked her what she thought about the situation with food and fuel and, and energy and so on and so forth. Uh, and she laid it out, and I thought, you know, rather than me tell you what she said, I'll just let you listen to what she said, and you can draw your own conclusions. So uh, listen up. Guess for this because you can ride a horse. I've seen you do it, and there are a lot of ranchers and farmers in your area. When you go to the grocery store, if you saw meat for mm -hmm. a good price, you'd buy a bunch of it. My mom would always put it in the freezer because she right. got a good price or it was on sale. Now you can't do that. You just buy what you need for the week. It's amazing how people's uh, grocery shopping habits have completely changed mm -hmm. because of inflation and the food supply prices going up. You know, that's the thing in South Dakota, we grow the f world's food. Mm -hmm. It's right there. But because there's so much government intervention, control by conglomerates, and even companies that aren't owned in the United States of America, we do have a food crisis on our hands. And, and this is something I've been talking about for 10 or 15 years, really, is that food security is national security. When we don't feed ourselves in this country, and we what? don't control our own food supply, then another country controls us. And so That's this is crazy. something that our federal government, our president, needs to start caring about because it's affecting every single family. Absolutely. At my grocery, I told this story last week, at my grocery store yeah. outside New York City, you know the, the rotisserie chicken? Mm -hmm. A year or two ago, it was four ninety nine. It's twelve ninety five for it's one the same chicken. Seriously? But, uh, you know, yep. The reason it's so high is because of Putin's price hike. Yo. Is anybody buying <laughs> yeah. that? Nobody's buying that. Nobody's Putin. buying that because we Putin know exactly how different it chicken. was when President Trump was in the White House. And it's all these decisions, energy costs. You know, if you look at a typical farmer in South Dakota right now, they're spending thousands of dollars more to run one tractor for a week than they did just a year ago. Uh, so you add that up, you know, you run five, six tractors 
on an operation, it's costing you a half a million dollars more just for energy. And support. they can't even afford the fertilizer. They can't. You know, and that's the thing that people don't realize is that farmers go to the bank and borrow money to put it in the dirt. You know, they really do. Yep. They they get an operating loan, they put it in the dirt, and they hope it rains. Mm -hmm. And that that fall, there'll be something back there to yeah. pick up and to harvest and sell and feed the world. And it really is a, a gambler's profession. And then when you have the federal government attacking them the way that they are right now, it's a challenge. It's yep. a challenge. Governor, there's a phrase we hear a lot. It, it's not your first. It's not my first rodeo. <laughs> my first and rodeo. that's the name of your book. Not yeah. my first rodeo. Tell us about this book. I know you go into okay, go motherhood ahead, and leadership and your so, marriage. About a week or two, was it maybe a month ago, Jared? We we shared a clip from a, a the the canning lady, and she had a letter from a yep. farmer, and the the letter from the farmer said that when people say to me, "I just went to the grocery store and there was plenty of food," there is no food crisis. She said, "I laugh because people don't understand how it works. The food in the grocery store today was grown, raised, and produced last year." Mm -hmm. She said that the food that will be in your grocery store next year is either being produced or not produced right now. Right now, here's what we know. Farmers are paying double for fertilizer and fuel, and they can't just pull that money. Well, maybe the farmers shouldn't be so greedy. I'm waiting. That's the next thing I'm waiting for, Jared. They should, Remember, they the, should just pay the cost of their yeah, price. The, so... Uh, the reason that gas is expensive is because oil companies are greedy. The government's not greedy. And so I'm waiting for the meat puppet to come out and say, food is expensive because farmers are greedy. Really? Maybe food is expensive because you forced farmers to pay 150% more for fuel than they were paying two years ago. Maybe because if they can get fertilizer, it's 200% more expensive now than it was two years ago. And from all that we're hearing is that farmers are scaling back because they can't afford it. Now, well, why don't will, they just go to banks and get loans? That's what they're already doing. Yeah. yeah. So but they can the go next, bankrupt. That's a fantastic narrative you want to push if you want to, you know, have the government take over the food production. It's like, you know, these these country bumpkins in flyover country, they just they're just hoarding all the money for the on the food for themselves. We need to go in there and take care of it. Well, I can tell you this and I've told it to you before, but I'm going to remind you. This is not the first time the federal government has interfered in food production. They've been interfering in food production my entire adult life. Yeah, but they haven't taken it over. Yeah. Well, they taken it over by proxy. What they did was they got farmers addicted to free money to, and then they pulled the free money out from under them and they went bankrupt. The banks foreclosed on their farms and then super giant farm co stepped in. They're like, well, we've got billions of dollars. We're going to buy your farm and we don't have any interest in running it. So we'll hire you as an employee to work on the farm, but all the profits will go to Farmco Incorporated and all the decisions will be made by Farmco Incorporated. And uh, if we need to, if we need to grow like scientifically engineered food crop to replacements so we can feed Soylent Green to the masses, and that's what we're going to do. And what Christy Nome said is she's it's straight. The fact that any foreign government or any company who's owned by a foreign entity would be involved in American food production is criminal. It's criminal. What, Jared, whatever happened to the, the when the Congress lady stood up and said, why are we producing critical pharmaceuticals overseas in China and not in the United States? And we need to do something about that. And we can't put our health and livelihood under the control of a communist regime. Whatever happened to that? Oh, we're January 6th and gun control and nah, 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 nah. you're not going to have any food and you're not going to be able to afford to pay your, uh, your electric bill or you're going to have to decide, do we want food this week, gasoline, or can we pay our electric bill? Because all three aren't getting done. Uh, but you can sleep well knowing that the federal government passed a, a gun control bill. Wow. 
You can sleep well knowing that they spent a billion dollars on the January 6th insurrection hearings. It's all smoke and mirrors. It's all bull crap. Uh, what we need is we need these governors to step up and enact the 10th Amendment and tell the federal government to go fornicate themselves. Uh, so the Brownells bullet point uh, for today is do you have your family's shite together is your community prepared yes no maybe if the answer is no i don't know what to say but get moving all right zach what do you what should they do we have, we do know what to say we have plans for them oh i got something to say yeah you've got a gold silver platinum i've got gold, a gold silver, silver platinum. platinum that's right Plan. um the patriot fire team manual is something you should have if you don't have it if you don't have the patriot fire team manual shame on you get it uh, if you do, fantastic. If you already have it and you want more information, buy Nicholas Orr book. Nicholas Orr, one of two books. He has one called The Pipe Hitter's Guide to Crushing the Coming Societal Breakdown. And then he has a more advanced book called The Pipe Hitter's Guide to the CIDC, the Citizens Irregular Defense Corps. Uh, I suggest, I highly suggest that you get those books. And I know exactly where you can get them. ShopSOTG.com is the perfect place to go if you are a student of the gun. Whether you want to expand your brain, increase your marksmanship, or help keep your family safe. All that, plus the pimp hand brands that you love. ShopSOTG.com has almost anything that an American patriot would want. Education, enlightenment, and entertainment, and we're open 24-7. Check out ShopSOTG.com today and see for yourself. Yes, indeed. Do that. Be there or be square. Be there or be square. All right, we got a uh, student of the gun homeroom for you guys. It's brought to you by our good friends at Crossbreed Holsters. Oh, apparently uh, New Orleans is flooding again. Uh, a fire broke out in New Orleans this year. And da, 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 da. So <laughs> I saw this headline. Uh, you know, we're from the South, or we spent a good time amount of time in the South. And I saw it, it said, New Orleans closes Old Navy base. And I thought, the store? Like with the discount shorts and stuff and khakis? No, no, it's small old capital Navy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, look, why is New Orleans, New Orleans closing the Old Navy down? No, it's the Old Navy. Oh, okay. All right. yeah, so it, rest assured, uh, if you're not getting carjacked or stabbed, you can still get some discount khakis in New Orleans. Mm. So there you go. Uh, but Well, you can get your discount khakis between carjackings and stabbings. <laughs> okay. Are there but, that many nowadays? Oh. That's crazy. Uh, people are getting their their car smashed into you can go to church in the morning come out and your windows are smashed out of your car oh jeez. yeah on sunday morning yeah all right just because it's hot doesn't mean we stop carrying uh, i've been hearing this you know people it's the the excuse monster the, the the human excuse monster well it's really hot man and and it's really hot okay i hear you it's really hot well, you, you know, I can't carry it. Why not? Well, it's really hot. Yes, you can. Quit crying. Quit being a baby. Uh, you can carry in the heat of the summer. You just need to think about it and plan it. And I'm going to tell you that the Super Tuck Deluxe, the original, the OG of hybrid holsters. Everything, everything else, everything you know as a hybrid holster is a ripoff of Mark Craighead's Super Tuck Deluxe. All right, speaking of Mark Craighead, you want to see something? Here's something freaky deaky. Yes. All right, you know how we have Signal? One of the things we use is yeah. Signal. And how every once in a while it'll say, such and such is on Signal now. Yeah. Would you like to follow them or communicate with them? Yesterday morning, phone popped up. Mark Craighead is now on Signal. Oh, you know why? 
Why? Because that number is still saved in your phone as Mark Craighead, and somebody else is using that number. All right, all right. So, okay, that phone number is still saved in my phone as Mark, and someone else got that number. So someone's yeah. got Mark's number. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was like. That happened to me. And I was like, what? And then I was like, oh, it has access to my contacts. Okay. So. He's trying to send us a message. Yeah, I know, Mark. I hear you, Mark. I'm, I'm trying to help you out, bro. So the, the Super Talk Deluxe is the OG of hybrid holsters. It is the original gangster of hybrid holsters. Every hybrid holster made by everybody today is a ripoff of some form or fashion of Mark's design. I'm going to tell you what, for hot weather, here's what you do. You go and you order a Super Tuck Deluxe and you pay the extra ducats for the horse hide because the horse hide will stand up to the sweating. Now, yeah. we know this yeah, because we tested this in the sweatiest, hottest place on earth, this little place called Biloxi, Mississippi, uh, where you, it's it's shorts weather about nine months out of the year, basically. If you're a freak like Jared, it's shorts weather 11 months out of the year. But uh, I would go for basically from April to September in shorts. The only time I'd put on long pants is if I had to do something formal or when I was, you know, when we were working on the range or whatever. Well, I guess lucky for you guys, I tried with all my might while I was down there to form my own nudist colony and it didn't work. So I had to wear shorts for 11 months out of the year. Oh, uh, spend the extra money on the horse hide. It's resilient. Uh, it, it holds up to the sweating. Now that presents its own issue. How do you carry a gun if you're in a nudist colony? Yeah, uh, you don't, mm. you just don't, you have to, you'd have to have a designated shooter. Yeah, Does a fanny towers. pack count as clothing? Yeah, I, actually, this is gross, but <laughs> I, I I believe that nudist people actually, what Zach just said, they, they put fanny packs on to oh, carry yeah. their, like, wallet and keys and phone and stuff. I, I, and the, the, the funny thing is when I was a little kid, I heard about this thing called a nudist colony. Yeah, and, it sounded and like you, a great idea. It sounds like it. It always sounds like a great idea till you actually see who's going to it. And then you're like, yeah it's not the victoria's secret uh, convention no it's not the victoria's secret catalog models that are there it's your grandpa that's who's there at the nudist colony it's your grandma who's at the nudist colony you're like ah! they, got some stuff, they got some stuff figured out uh, stop <laughs> uh, people are googling nudist colony right now don't do it don't do it uh, we got some input from the audience. They said shoulder strap, chest rig, belly band, and ankle holsters. Ankle hey. holster. That's oh, it right there, buddy. That's no, how I would no, do it. no. Uh, the yeah, you could get the uh, the the Miami Classic. You get the Miami Classic uh, uh, Sunny Crockett rig. <laughs> but seriously, folks, seriously, it's hot. You're in shorts and t-shirts. I know this. But here's the reality of the situation. If you if you carry correctly, you still need a good belt. You need a good holster, the Super Tuck. The great thing about the Super Tuck horse hide holster and the, the regular leather one too, but the horse hide is better, is after wearing it for a week or two, it's going to conform to your body. It will literally go right back into the same spot every time. It will be, become almost a part of your body. It's going to be so comfortable. You're going to be elbow checking yourself to make sure your gun's there. I, when I started wearing those, I was like, I would get that weird, like, do I have my, I have my gun on, right? I know I do. Yeah. And you're like, it just, okay. It's, it's sir. Yeah. yeah. So the, real quick, ahead. I just want to throw this in. So Sammy makes fun of me for like slap checking myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like where, well, like, I'll be like, testicles wallet and watch yeah i'll just like slap each of my pockets to make sure there's something in there i'll be like okay good she's like why do you do that it's like i, I can make sure i have all my stuff and it's, so whenever she sees me do that she's like you can feel it what the hell are you doing no, like, yeah, no it's, it's good to slap test yourself yeah yeah but yeah she makes fun of me for that yeah the reason that you have to elbow bump yourself is is you elbow check for your gun is because most people have worn uncomfortable holsters their whole lives and they've just gotten used to they think Feeling that's it, just yeah. the way it's supposed to be they're conditioned 
to believe that an uncomfortable holster that digs into their side is what they should have on. And they're constantly aware of it. They're constantly aware that the gun is there. And then you put on a super tuck and you're not constantly aware of the gun because it's comfortable and it's always there and you can wear it for 12 hours. Good belt, good holster. Now, you you know, people say, why? Yeah, you can't carry a full-size gun. What well, What are you wanting to carry? A, a freaking a Taurus Judge or a, a freaking... A G19 starts out with 15 plus one. Perf, perfectly fine. Uh, I don't know what to tell you guys. I mean, I when we were in Florida, not Florida, in Biloxi, where I lived in Florida too, but when we were in Biloxi, I was carrying in the heat of the summer in shorts and t shirt a Canic TP9 SA in a super tuck. I tried not to horse side holster, but it didn't work with a good belt under a t shirt all the time, every day. How did you manage that? How did, how did, how is that possible? Good belt, good holster. Yeah, I still have and wear regularly the belt that I've had for. It's a crossbreed instructor belt that I've had for. I, I don't know. It has to have been ten years now. Many long times. Yeah. Many many long times. So the point of this segment is to be dangerous on demand, and just because it's hot doesn't mean you should stop carrying. And something that I learned when I was a popo, when we had heat waves. Our calls went up domestic violence and stuff like that the calls went up during heat waves because people get hot and frustrated and angry and they start taking it out on each other um these stupid humans yeah it was i mean it was it was we could predict it it's kind of like full moon type stuff we could predict it it was if there was a heat wave uh, we we knew that there were going to be more domestic calls and so forth. But a heat wave and a full moon. That's yeah. a real problem there. Which is actually coming up here very soon. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much to Crossbreed Holsters. When you go over there, use the promotional code SOTG. Save some money. Get a good holster. Carry your freaking gun, man. All right. The Empire State strikes back. I have to announce something that's new. Jared's going to announce something that's new. I just created it at the request of some of our grad program members that are listening live. Uh Uh-oh. They wanted a Telegram channel, so I made one. It's t.me slash student of the gun. There you go. Really? Yep. You can go there, and you can use that now. Oh. So you're welcome. So that's a thing. So that is now a thing. All right. That's too hard to remember. Studentofthegun.com slash Telegram. Slash Telegram. All right. So what's going on up in the Empire State? So uh, essentially, a lawsuit was filed against the state of New York uh, with and it went all the way to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said, hey, we, we, we went back and we read the whole Constitution thing. And it doesn't say in the Constitution that the government gets to demand from the citizen good cause to exercise a right you do not have to demonstrate reasonable cause or need or you know you don't have to demonstrate need to the government to get your rights rights are not based on whether the government thinks you should have them see because that would be privileges a right is something the government has no authority to impede or to take away so, well, you didn't think that the bullies in New York were just going to lay down and take it, right? They're like, we're oh, gonna take oh, it. so you, you think that that people don't have to beg for uh, rights from us? Well, we'll show you. We'll show you. And uh, this story is from the Denver Channel dot com. Uh, and it says, I thought that was weird. Yeah. I was like, what? what happened Gun in applicants in New York will what? What are they going to have to do, Jared? We'll to, have for- to list social media accounts. <sighs> now, if you're a headline reader and uh, and you're also a, what do we call them? 
a what? Um, reasonable person, I guess, would mm. be the best term to say. You're a headline reader and a reasonable person. You think, oh, that you know, that's not so bad. However, you shouldn't have to do anything. Yeah. Dateline. This is this is totally Orwellian. This is. You hear that? That is Orwell spinning at 8,000 RPM in his grave. You got the story up, Jared? Yeah. Dateline, so, Albany, New York. This is July 8th, 2022 is when it was posted. So a week after getting spanked, basically, by the Supreme Court, they said, oh, yeah? You know what's crazy? Oh, yeah? Is that they're, they spent, I don't even know how many countless man hours trying to figure out a way to oppress their citizens. Yep. Rather than just move forward. No, they're and they're not just gonna let or whatever you peasants do stuff. New York State is rolling out a novel strategy to screen applicants for gun permits. Gun permits. The state will require people seeking to concealed or carry concealed handguns to hand over lists of their social media accounts for a review of their character and conduct. By whom? By Zuckerberg? It's an approach applauded by many Democrats and national gun control advocacy groups as missed warning signs pile up in investigations of mass killings. One of the missed warning signs Bull. is, are you I friends guess. with any FBI agents? I was just about to say the the thing that they're missing here is that most of these people that do these things are already known to law enforcement, have already been... Uh, Multiple encounters with law enforcement. Yes, that word. But some experts have raised questions about how the law will be enforced and how it will be addressed or how it will address free speech concerns. You mean like I don't have to justify what I say to the government? Some of what? the local officials will be tasked with reviewing the social media content. Also are asking whether they'll have the resources. You know why? Well, because we're going to no need more money. Funding was allocated to help manage the new requirement. Oh, well, that that's just a matter of time. They're going to have to just wait till the next session, and then, hell, they'll just allocate $100 million to pay people to scrub through your social media accounts to see if you said anything bad about Obama or Biden. or. So we're going to let... So the, the Supreme Court just said, no, New York... Citizens don't have to come to you and provide good cause or justify their desire to exercise a right. You cannot deny a right by telling people they have to justify it to you first. So what did they do? They're like, oh, yeah, well, if we find out that you said anything or wrote any words or shared a may may that we don't like, then you're not going to get your permission slip. What? Yeah. If we read, read the thing or see pictures or, you know, any stuff, you're like, well, you mean you're looking, are you looking for evidence of crimes? Well, no, because... Because, well, if people actually commit crimes, we don't we don't enforce criminal law. Well, anymore, uh, well, that, that's not the point. The point is not to enforce criminal law. The the point is to arbitrarily give a government agent the authority to decide which social media posts are okay and which ones are not interesting huh does that sound a little bit orwellian to you guys i smell you smell it Jared? i smell another lawsuit <laughs> oh i smell another lawsuit wow and what's crazy is the the denver channel is kind of like yeah you know well some people you know some of those people think this might raise free speech questions but we all know that no according to president me puppet no amendment is absolute and the government has the authority to just decide <laughs> so the government has the authority to decide 
which amendments they're going to follow and which ones they're going to ignore. Because none are absolute. Of course, no one in the press has the guts to raise their hand when the meat puppet says that and say, you mean like slavery and women voting and taxes? They would be escorted out of the conference immediately. What do you mean? Well, it's the 16th Amendment that says you're allowed to steal. You you can steal money from the, the people's income because nowhere in the Constitution does it say that the central federal government gets to reach their hand into the pocket of the citizens of Utah, Wyoming, Texas, and take money out. Well, yeah, but what we're dead is we're just like, you know, like, hey, you know what? We're World War Two is expensive. And uh, and and you you guys are all patriots, right? Uh, yeah. So well, we're just going to do a tax so that we can cover the cost of fighting World War One, the war that no one in, in America wanted to be involved in. <laughs> and you're like well and of course what they what do they say jared they're like it's just a tiny little percentage you'll you won't even notice it it's a tiny small percentage of your income it's so small you won't even notice it it's not that big of a deal and for those of you who've never been to america i'm gonna go ahead and hip you to something it never, no tax ever goes away, no tax ever gets smaller, and it always increases. So, so uh, Sniffy Joe says that no amendment is absolute, therefore we can ignore the ones we don't like. Okay. Did you guys see, oh, speaking of slavery, did you see the, the note that I dropped into the show notes about... Uh, Nigerian slavery. How the the Nigerian? Uh, I saw that you dropped the note, but I didn't actually read it. Yeah, we're I gonna put that into notes. we're gonna put it into the bonus hour. So anyway, some some government officials from Nigeria took their slave to England to have his kidneys harvested to give to their daughter. <laughs> really? Yes. When did you drop that in? Yesterday. <laughs> uh, I didn't see that link this morning. Oh, yes, indeed he do. Yes, indeed he do. Uh, America's the worst country in the world, and America's slavery. Okay, whatever. All right. How far have we been going? Uh, and in New York, this is what I have to say to you people in New York, all you guys. Whoa, man. It, it goes all the way back to the Biloxi Glass Case of Emotion Studios, when New York, in the dead of night, passed the SAFE Act bill. We're not going to debate it. It's not going to be public. It's a crisis. We're just going to do this, and you're going to suck it. The answer, by the way, is 52 minutes. Okay, and the people of New York said to us, that'll never stand. Kumo's going to be gone. We're going to appeal to the Supreme Court. We're going to get that overturned. Um, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a mathematician, uh, but it's been six, seven years, eight years now since the SAFE Act got passed in the dead of night illegally. And they just went ahead and they, they took that whole, like, well, what does the law say we have to do to pass a law? What do we have to do? They're like, yeah, it doesn't matter. I don't, I don't, I don't care. It says we all have to agree. It's a crisis. We decided it's a crisis, so, so all that public debate and, and you know, I just pff, throw that in the garbage. We're, we're going to do what we want to do when we want to do it, and the people are just going to suck it. Since we have time, I, I want to go back to the tax thing in the Constitution because there is an article that I want to understand what it means. Oh, okay. Because I thought that when I read it, I thought, oh, this does give the federal government the power to institute taxes. It does, not income tax. It doesn't, the federal government, Jared, you know how I know that that's a fact? Yeah, but we didn't say income tax earlier. Okay, or income tax. One of the two. Individual income tax, the gov federal government has no constitutional authority to oh, get individual go. income tax. I'll, I'll just read it. We have time. We have enough time to read this. So it's Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. It says the Congress shall have power to lay and collect taxes, duties, imposts, and excises. 
to pay the debts and provide for the common defense and general welfare of the United States. But all duties, imposts, and excises shall be uniform throughout the United States. Uh, to borrow money on the credit of the United States, to regulate commerce with foreign nations and among the several states and with the Indian tribes, to establish a uniform rule of naturalization and uniform laws on the subject of bankruptcies throughout the United States, to coin money, regulate the value thereof and of foreign coin, and fix the standard of weights and measures, to provide for the punishment of counterfeiting the securities and current coin of the United States, to establish post offices and post roads, to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and investors the exclusive right to their respective writings and copyrights. Stories. Yes. Trademarks and copyrights. To constitute tribunals inferior to the Supreme Court, to define and punish piracies and felonies committed on the high seas and offenses against the law of nations high c high c like the that's drink. like that's like yeah it's like a, an orange fruity drink that your grandma pours for you <laughs> to declare war grant letters of mark and reprisal um what is that mark and reprisal yeah, it means reprisal. that's uh you can you can contract private uh individuals okay. to that's what i thought just yeah. making sure and make rules concerning captures on land and water to raise of uh, raise and support armies, but no appropriation of money to that use shall be for a longer term than two years. Hmm, interesting. To provide and maintain a navy. To make rules for the government and regulation of the land and naval forces. To provide for calling forth the militia to execute the laws of the union, suppress insurrections and repel invasions. To provide for organizing, arming, and discipling the militia, and for governing such part of them as may be employed in the service of the United States, reserving to the states respectively the appointment of the officers and the authority of training the militia according to the dis discipline prescribed by Congress. That doesn't even happen today. No. So, okay. Wait, hold on. There's a couple more to exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district, not exceeding 10 miles square as may by session of particular States and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of the government of the United States and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state in which the same shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards and other needful buildings and this is the last thing to make all laws which shall be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the foreign powers or i mean the foregoing powers and all other powers vested by this constitution in the government of the united states or in any department or office thereof okay can i speak now yes all right i was wrong I was wrong. They didn't use World War I as an excuse to pass the Revenue Act of 1913. What they did is they used World War I to increase the amount of taxes that they took from the people. The original, doc, the original amendment was passed in 1913, and it was after World War I that Wilson was like, hey, we're in debt, so guess who gets to pay it? That's right. It would be you, the American people. So... That, that's something that I was always raised to believe was that the that the amount of money and it wasn't they they already had put it into place. And then after World War One, the government looked at the people and said, hey, look at all this money we spent. We're rescuing Europe from World War One. We got to you guys are going to have to pay. Uh, the U.S. Supreme Court, it says uh, in the Pollock versus Farmers Loan and Trust Act, the U.S. Supreme Court declared certain taxes on income the, uh, such as those on property under the 1984 act to be unconstitutionally unapportioned direct taxes so they found that these taxes violated the constitution you see that's, that's people who say honest. well the government it says right there in the constitution that they can take individual people's money no they can't because the, they 
the Supreme Court, they tried to do it. Supreme Court knocked them down. And then that is why they had to come up with Amendment 16. They're like, well, crap. If the Supreme Court is going to smack us down and say that it is that it violates, it says right here, it said it is a unconstitutionally unapportioned direct tax, which violates Constitution. So the right. Supreme Court, they actually had the gall to read the Constitution. How dare they? They're out of control. Well, the and in Section Nine here, one of the things it says: no tax or duty shall be laid on articles exported from any state. Mm -hmm. So. so uh, uh, and, and then so I'm trying to figure out um, in the somewhere in here, it does say that the government has the, the federal government has the ability to regulate interstate commerce. Mm. So what they did is the government said, oh, so that the, the criminals in D.C. said, crap, the Supreme Court smacked us down. They told us we can't take our hand, our greedy, stinky hands and put it in those people's pockets. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to push an amendment. We're going to change the Constitution to give ourselves the authority to take direct taxes from the people. Now, the whole point I'm bringing all this up is because Sniffy Joe, the meat puppet, every once in a while, they send him out to, to tell America that no amendment is absolute. And they all have limitations and restrictions, and the government can. And nobody... Not one single scumbag sitting in the press gallery has the guts to raise their hand and say, does that include the 13th Amendment? Can we alter, modify the 13th Amendment? Does that include the 16th Amendment? Uh, does that include the 19th Amendment? Oh, uh, uh, no. 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 Uh, uh, well, I mean, you just said that no amendment is absolute and that we can alter, change, and, uh, you know, whatever. So the 19th Amendment says that chicks are allowed to vote, but you said that all amendments are subject to change and none of them are absolute. So my county doesn't think chicks should be allowed to vote. And so what you're saying is that we can pass a law that says chicks can't vote. Well, I never said that. I'm not an animal there. Well, you're an imbecile. You just said that we can pick and choose. How about Amendment 13? Amendment 13 says no more slaves. Uh, so can we have slaves now? Can we bring back, like, indentured servitude or, you know, can we like do slave lights? What, what, what are you saying there? Well, no way. Uh, do you know where we lost our way? How what, how much time we got? Uh, probably like 20 minutes. We're an hour okay. and two minutes in. Okay. So do you know where we lost our way with the amendment process? Jared, do you know? Uh, I don't know. I'll tell you. All of the first 10 amendments, the Bill of Rights is all about what, Jared? Zach, what is the Bill of Rights about? Uh, setting government powers. Or limiting government it, powers? Limiting. Thank you very much. The Bill of it's Rights. Like a lot of things. What do you The first here? 10 limits the authority of the government. Well, the entire Constitution it does that. Right. But the, but the Bill of Rights, the first 10 amendments, the reason they had to go in there is because our founding fathers, thank the Lord for them, said, we don't trust you. Put it in writing. How do they? How do they? Man, this is fascinating. Now, to me. it's like, how do they know? How do they know so early on? Is really the question. Because because our founders studied the history of government yeah. throughout the world history. They they knew they're like every they were educated men, and it wasn't like they were Harvard grads. They paid attention to the world. Yeah, and they said and every government will become tyrannical. Every government. The more money and power you give them, the worse it will become. Doesn't matter. The French, the, the Greeks, the whatever, the, they knew that democracy was a failure. That's why we're not a democracy. But so, the first, the first so. 10 amendments are there specifically to limit the authority of the government. 
what the government decided to do. And if you look at the history of our country, we went a hundred years. Let's see. When was Amendment 11 passed? I want to speak correctly. 1795. Uh, Amendment 11. Oh, it's passed in, in 1794 and it was ratified in 1795. Okay, Amendment 11 says judicial power of the United States shall not be construed or extend to any suit of law, yada, yada, yada. So we had 11, then we had 12 ratified in... 1803, 1804 ratified. 1804, all right, and 13... 1865. All right, so we went almost we a hundred years with only three additional ones. Then 68. Then after the Civil War, after the Civil War, what happened was the federal government said, oh, you know what? You know what we can do? We can use the bully pulpit and we can use the media because now we have mass print media. We can make everyone in America pay attention to what we want them to pay attention to because we have the mass media of newspapers. This is before radio. And so what we will do is we'll have, and we know that Hearst was a yellow journalist. We know that Hearst saw his newspapers as ways to influence people's thinking and behavior for the good or bad, whatever, for whatever he wanted. We know this. Where we lost our way as a nation, people are like, oh, you, you radical, no, 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 you like talk about the first 10 amendments, but you don't like to talk about the others. Because here's what they did, Jared. All of the original amendments covered were, this stuff were based right? upon. It seems like it should. They were based upon limiting the power of the central federal government and ensuring the rights of the people. That's the first 10 after that what did they start using they started using amendments to create malum prohibitum see malum in say is what a moral wrong you don't need to convince people malum in say if i say to you hey is murder wrong you're like yeah murder is wrong Malamense. I don't need to like sit down and get out a whiteboard and convince you that murder is wrong unless you're an abortionist. Stealing. Is stealing good or bad? No, stealing's bad. That's Malamense. Is rape good or bad? Rape is bad. Is lying good or bad? Lying is bad. All these things are Ten Commandments, Judeo Christian basic rules. Every religion on planet Earth has a basic set of rules. Don't kill, don't, you know, steal, don't lie, don't cheat, whatever. But malum prohibitum is the government coming along and saying, you know what? We all went into a room in this building and we all decided that you people are going to do this. Well, what do you mean? Well, we just decided. Think about it. All the amendments after 10 they 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 started like well how can we control you see amendment 13 is not about restricting the authority of the central federal government and preserving the rights of the people it's the exact opposite amendment 13 says we're going to give the government the authority to take as much of your money as they decide you see, because ever since the passage of Member 13, they're like, well, we're just going to... 16. Oh, I'm sorry, 13, 16. Yeah, yeah 16. Thinking, ever since the one. passage of, of 16, they're like, well, we're just going to take 2% of your annual income for ourselves. We're going to spend it on what we want to spend it on. They're like, yeah, 2% was okay, but we really need 5 they are like, 5 uh. And then what is it? What do we know about the, the income tax? It's not even... Like the income tax rules are like, oh, do you do this? Don't you do that? Do you do this? Do you not do that? Da, da, da. Nothing is even. Nothing is across the board. Yeah, so it says here in section eight, which has not been amended. I checked specifically for the amendment of section eight, article one, section eight. It says uh, that all duties and posts and excises shall be uniform throughout the United States. But they're not. Some people get, say a lot of people in the United States think the tax system is great because 
the federal government has convinced them that it's a lottery. And so they'll never fight against it because to them it's free money. It's not free money. See, if you want to know the problem with the amendment system is the first 10 followed the rules of the Constitution. The first 10 limited the authority of the federal government and ensured the rights of the people. After that, the farther away from 10 you get, the more authority the amendments grant to the government. I mean, look at look at 19. Was it 18 or 19? Which was prohibition? I don't 18? Think that's true because... You don't think it's true? No, I don't think that's what true. What is 16? Oh, well, 20, if, if the further away it gets, the uh, the further away the amendment gets from 10, the more power it grants to the thing than the, the most recent one. Uh, I could I could agree with that. Number 27, I could agree. But number 26 is, is um, the right of the citizens of the United States who are 18 years of age and older to vote shall... Mm -hmm. not be denied or abridged by the United States or by any state on account of age. Do you know why that is? Why did our founders pick 21? Um, probably because you're more able to make a uh, valid, logical decision when you're 21. Because, because, well, first of all, they understood the human development. The human brain is not finished developing at 18. It's still developing. Number two, people who were over 18 who were like, 19, 20, 21, by that time they were 21, they were active, involved members of their community. They had jobs, they had careers, and so on and so forth. They're married, they had children. So they were responsible adult members of, of society, whereas 18-year-olds, most of them are still living with their parents and so forth. The reason that it was the Democrat Party of the United States that pushed that amendment because they firmly believed that they could influence the voting habits of of 18 19 and 20 year olds they firmly that's they did that it was a vote harvesting scheme by the democrat party what now was, it failed so what was the initial what i'm most interested in is what event triggered, which lie did they no, use no, no I'm, let me ask my question which event triggered each of these uh, amendment the constitutional conventions or or whatever i don't even remember the we process. don't have a it wasn't a convention uh, you know why i don't remember the process because the last amendment was done in 1992 mm -hmm. i was two years old yeah so i've never went through an actual amendment um, being added to the constitution now i remember theoretically what we learned in school but what is the actual process well it's in the constitution look at number 18 what was 18 18 was prohibition prohibition did not guarantee the rights of the people prohibition overturned amendment 10 you see in amendment 10 with amendment 10 if mississippi if everybody in mississippi got together and decided you know what alcohol is the devil and we don't want to have alcohol here then under amendment 10 mississippi would have the authority to be a dry state and so on and so forth what the feds did are like that damn son of a bitchin 10th amendment is in our way and we can't have that so what do they do amendment 18 is malum prohibitum has nothing to do with malum in say amendment 18 gave the united states central federal government more authority power and money than they had ever had up to that point it allowed them to overturn and to ignore Amendment 10 and to reach into every single one of the states and exercise their power. Amendment 18 was terrible. But the problem is the genie got out of the bottle. Even though we got we came to our senses and repealed it with Amendment 21, it was too late. Because this, because Washington, D.C. had already tasted that power. They had tasted the power, they had tasted the authority, and they found that they liked it. They liked creating centralized federal bureaucracies that could go into every state and swing their big wiener around 
and force people to do what they wanted. If you want to know what the problem is with amendments, is most of the amendments, I just pointed it out, 18, uh, 16, and so forth, if you want to be a strict constitutionalist, you say, okay, the point of the first 10 was to limit the power of the federal government, end of story, to ensure and guarantee the inalienable rights of the people. If an amendment is proposed that does not do that, it's kind of like when I was a police officer and where there were no suspects. A crime occurred, no suspects. What do you do? You say, all right, this is the crime. We don't have any suspects. How do we go about finding suspects? You look at that and you say, who would have benefited from that action? Who benefits from that action? Who benefits from Amendment 18? Who benefits from Amendment 16? Oh, well, the government benefits. The people don't benefit. The government benefits. Think about that. Uh, how, how far are we in, Zach? Currently one hour and 13 minutes, or 15 okay. minutes, rather. Uh, do we have any questions in Discord or comments or people like jumping up and down screaming or anything like that? Uh, give me a quick second. I do not see any questions in the comments at the moment, no. Okay. Uh, before we go... I, I did I want to I don't want to bring you guys down I don't want to be a, I don't want to be a, a bummer uh, but we lost an extended member uh, of our family this weekend uh, a gentleman named Craig Fritz a lot of you guys in the grad program know Craig Craig had been with us uh, as an, a very active member of the grad program for many years he he's one of the guys that convinced his wife to be quiet and listen <laughs> Like, what is this guy yelling about on the radio? Just just be quiet and listen to him, okay? That's funny. Craig uh, was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of cancer several years ago. And the doctors, being what they are, they're like, oh, well, you got this, and you're going to be dead in six months, so get your crap together. But Craig said, fornicate that. Yeah, but he held out, and he proved them wrong. And he kept hanging on, and he got himself a few more years of life. But this weekend, we lost him. He just, hey, we lost him. So his journey has ended, but he was an extended member of our family, and we're diminished, and the grad program's diminished. And you guys in the grad program, a lot of you guys know, I don't, but uh, we found out yesterday, so... Fair winds and following seas, shipmate. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this this is the the big the big reveal. Now is the time for the big reveal. Uh oh, you may have noticed that yours truly has been. Uh, I'm working my fingers down to the nib, uh, writing new books. Like, what is up with Paul writing all these books like a crazy person? Uh, we did the uh, accomplished the instructor development manual, uh, which is done. I did the precision rifle range book, which is done. Uh, I did the martial application of the pistol book, which is done. We are going to launch a new product, a new audio product, and the new audio product is going to be called Student of the Gun University Podcast, or SOTGU for short. The reason we're doing this, like, why are you doing that? You already have a show. Calm down. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. This makes four shows, by the way. That's right. Calm down. I know what I'm doing. I'm a professional. The Student of the Gun University podcast is going to be single topic, short form, easy to digest, and I'm going to deliver it directly based on training and training firearms training and related issues so what this is going to give the audience an opportunity this is you you're the audience an opportunity to do would be to pick and choose your topics and consume the material at your leisure uh, like i said they're going to be single topic the let me i'll give you an example episode one how to find a good instructor how to find a good firearms instructor episode one episode two Skill is more important than gear. 
Episode three, the top three mistakes that new gun owners make before going to training. You seeing a trend here? Exactly. So these are going to be released each Thursday. So, and what we will do is we will hip you guys when you listen to the Wednesday show, which is what I'm talking about right now. When you listen to the Wednesday show, I will say at the end of the, this is the plan, either myself or Jared or Zachary, one of the three of us at the end of Wednesday show will be, will say, oh, and by the way, tomorrow's SOTGU university podcast will be how to find a good instructor. Yep. So. Which is going to happen actually tomorrow for sure. <laughs> if it's not available on your uh, favorite podcast player, wherever you're listening to this show, then you'll be able to get it at SOTGU.com. So you just have to give it a little bit to populate. We will for sure have it out by tomorrow will be the number one episode. We'll actually have the first three out. Yeah, we do three pillar episodes. That's kind of the way they do it. What's the so, other two? It's how to... Uh, skill is greater than gear and top three mistakes. And Oh, you want the like five and six? And no, all I that. just want the top three. Okay. The, the titles, the full titles of, of the first three episodes. How to find a good firearms instructor. That's number one. Skill is greater than gear. That's number two. And top three mistakes new shooters make before they go to training. Oh, that's funny. That's number three, and there's top three mistakes. Ah, uh, three. Yeah, it's almost like someone used their brain. Yeah. Yes. And so you're like, wow, is this what you guys spent your vacation on? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so while you thought we were on vacation, what we were actually doing was all three of us were working diligently in the background to come up with a new product for you. So there you go. You're welcome, freaks. And, and of course, the the direct uh, website is SOTGU, short for Student of the Gun University, dot com. SOTGU, Sierra Oscar Tango Golf Uniform dot com. So that is that, Mr. That's That. And now you know, and knowing is half the battle. All right, speaking of the grad program and speaking of the bonus hour, tomorrow's bonus hour, Thursday's bonus hour, uh, titled Gray Beards Unite. That's right, Gray Beards Unite, you freaks. Uh, we've got, uh, we'll have a follow-up. We've got more Big Brother news for you guys. Uh, Japanese gun control failure, we'll talk about that. I'm going to talk about it from the perspective of a person who spent uh, many years, many, many, many many years uh, working as an executive protection agent and bodyguard and how the idea that you just walk right up to a dude and cap him with a muzzle loader is probably not a good thing. Uh, we will also have a leadership lesson tomorrow. We'll talk about uh, confidence from where does confidence originate? Oh, I don't know. And whatever else it is we feel like talking about. Maybe we'll talk about, uh, Maybe we'll talk about uh, Nigerian slavery. We might talk about Nigerian slavery tomorrow. If you need a kidney, uh, I know where you can get one. Uh, really cheap. <laughs> oh, that's not right. But it's true. And I guarantee you that your local news outlet did not put this story in front of your face. Because why would they? Why would they? Uh, doesn't sell their agenda. Doesn't sell their agenda. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you did not enjoy today's show, A, go to the store and get better taste. Uh, and B, if you'd like a refund of today's purchase price, send a self-addressed stamped envelope to P.O. Box 405 Boulder, Colorado. Got to include that self-addressed stamped envelope. And you'll get. we will give you a full refund for today's purchase price. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, now is the time that I remind you you are a beginner once. And you're a student for life. We appreciate your reviews. If you haven't left a review or updated yours recently, head on over to Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast player to voice your opinion. Don't forget to join us at The Student Lounge, a place for like-minded individuals to learn, connect, and support each other. No chicanery will be tolerated. Remember to check studentofthegun.com daily for new free content and giveaways. Watch, listen, read, shop, and connect at studentofthegun.com. Are you a social butterfly? Connect with us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter for new content 
content each and every day at Student of the Gun. Watch Student of the Gun TV and videos from our trusted partners on Roku, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, Chromecast, and even AirPlay. Go to studentofthegun.com for direct links. And remember, you're a beginner once, a student for life.